Ben Freed, the Goldschmidt family, the Lustiger family, the Mermelstein family, the Schwartz family, the Teichmann family, and the Lipstein, Lipstein and Zangerian family. The Shear is dedicated Lili Nishmas, Malkiel Natan, Ben Ezra Ben Yamin, Lili Nishmas, Avi Meiri Yitzchak Yaakov, Ben Svi Hirsch, Lili Nishmas, Devora, Bas Yoshua Heschel, Lili Nishmas, Zisel Bas Chaim Zev, and Lili Nishmas, Tzvi Akiva Ben David. The world is filled with Shiduchim and with Zivugim. Different types of Shiduchim in the world. Shiduchim of Achasen and Kala, Shiduchim of friends, Shiduchim of Rebbeim and Talmidim. I said over at Shalashudis yesterday, a vart that I heard from the Rosh Hashiva, from the Rav Chitzarov, that the Rav Chitzar said that there's a certain zivug that changes in the Zman of Purim. The Goyen tells us that when we recite Kriyashma, we have to think about the shame Adnast and the shame Yudke Vovke. When we say Hashem's name, we should think about HaKadosh Baruch Hu being Adoin Kol Olamim and also being the Hoya Hoya Vaviyya. But the Rav Shitzar Rebbe said that there's a certain zivug that we bless the Chassan and Kaula at their zivug to be Oyla Yafe. That the zivug should be Oyla, the numerical value literally, of Yafe of Tzadi He. So the Rosh Hashiva explained, and the Rav Shitzar Rebbe said that what that means is that the zivug la'asid lavo, the Shem Havai and the Shem Adnas that we ordinarily mention and it's with the numerical value of Yudke Vavke and the Shem Adnus added to that to equal Tzadi Aleph, La'asid Lavo, that's not going to be the case. La'asid Lavo, the Shem Avai is going to change and it's going to be with the Shem Yudke Yudke. It's going to be four more. It's going to be Oyle, literally, Yafe, the number of Tzadi He. The Zman of Purim is the Zman of La'asid Lavo, is the zman of a yontif she'ena asida livato? Is the zman of the perspective of the zivug that is going to be oyla yafe? That's going to be tzadi hey, as the Rashiva explains. When Haman also the oyla yafe is the same numerical value of tzadi hey, Haman will be annihilated, and Emir Hashem, the ultimate zivug will be with the shame yudke yudke when the shame adnus. But everyone knows that to have a real zivug. And to understand the zivug, you need a shadchan. You need someone to read the shidduch. Baruch Hashem, it's a tremendous schus to have here in our base medrash someone who is a shadchan for all of us. The Rosh Hashiva, who has the ability to read the shidduch, to allow us to understand what it means to be a yid, what it means to be Meshadach yourself with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What it means to enter into the Yontav of Purim Pesach. What it means to have a Shidduch in our lives of the Shem Adus and the Shem Avaya. So I want to thank the Rosh Hashiva for his constant Shadchanus, for his constant elaboration of the opportunity that we have to be part of the Jewish nation and to be Avodim of the Ebishter and of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But I also want to take this opportunity Many, of, many asked how the shir came about. And the MS is that it was really hashgacha. And I want to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as Chazal say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Mibriya Sa'olam, was Yoshev Umezavig Zivugim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was Mezavig Zivugim that the shir should happen. So I want to thank the HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well for arranging the shir tonight. It's with tremendous COVID that I call upon the Rosh Hashiva Shlita. Bereshus koyd mora da asrish lita, bereshus kol ha kol ha kodesh hazeh. Thank you. It's a schus to be able to be here and address an oylem of evakshe Hashem in these extraordinary days leading into 
the Hele Giyontav of Purim. We know that Purim doesn't seem to fit into the cycle of all of the other Yom Tovim. Most Yom Tovim, there is a basic formula. There's a day of Simcha, there's a Suda, there's Tfilos, there's Hallel. But the Yom Tov of Purim just doesn't fit in. The entire day is very different. The way that we rejoice, the idea of drinking, there are certain uh, leniencies even in halacha that you don't find during the whole year. It's a very unique and singular simcha. It's a simcha that is unparalleled. And as the Rav mentioned, this is a simcha that will continue even into Yemais HaMashiach when Kolo HaMayadim Asidim Libotl, all of the Yom Toivim will cease to exist facing the order, the light of Mashiach. Yet this Yom Tiv, which seems so out of place in the normal cycle of the Jewish calendar, will live forever and will be with us even into the days of Mashiach. And we need to understand what it is about this day, what it is about this Yom Tiv that takes us to a different place and it's a completely different experience. And the key to understanding it is through reading a very important letter. That letter is the Megillus Esther. It's called an Igeres. So Igeres Hazois, a letter we know is folded, comes in an envelope, you have to open it up. And the letter of Megillus Esther is endless. There's so much there, there's so much insight and so much Musa and so much depth of Pshat and it's shimmering with soid and secrets of Torah. And any little bit of understanding that we can add in our grasp of Megillah Sester will give us a greater connection to the Yontav of Purim. Let's take a look at the story and ask a few questions. We know there's a cloud that's brought in the Svara Magdoshim, Tzadik HaKoyim brings in others, that whenever you see something mentioned the first time in the Torah, you know that's its shayrish, that's its root. And when something is mentioned the first time, you know you have to analyze that. Now, where is Haman mentioned first in the Megillah? So we all know anybody who was a child coming to the laning of the Megillah knows that Peyre Gimel, you get your grager ready, you get your, your, your caps ready. And then you let loose. But the emesis, we know according to Chazal, the Gemara tells us Haman has an earlier entry into the Megillah. The seven advisors of Achashverosh, the last who is Memuchon, who he asked for advice what to do about Vashti when she refused to appear before him. She was Mevaze Achashverosh, and Memuchon, the Gemara tells us, Memuchon Zuham. Memuchon is Homa. Tysus brings another source and says that it's Daniel, but according to our Gemara, Mamuchan is Haman. So the first time we meet Haman in the Megillah is when he's advising Achashverosh what to do about Vashti. Now Chazal tell us, Mikan shehediyat koifetz b'roish. From here we learn a commoner can jump ahead and has the insolence to speak before those who are greater than him. And the Gemara means because in the list of the seven advisors, Mamuchan is the last, which means he was the smallest of all of them. And yet he is the one who speaks first. Now, if we learn the lesson of Hediyat Koifetz Beroish from the first time homage mentioned, it would make sense that we have to understand this. And if we understand this, we understand what Haman is about. And we understand what the Yeshua of Purim is about. Now, we know, Chazal tell us, the Gemara says, that everybody was afraid to speak up. Nobody wanted to tell Achashverosh what to do about Vashti. He even called the Sanhedrin, the Chachme Yisrael, Lufnei Kol Yoidei Dos Vodin, the Gemara said, he called the Chachme Yisrael, he said, you have great wisdom, what should I do about Vashti? They said, they, they tried to get out of it, they slipped out of it, they said, we don't know what to say. We're going to tell him, leave her alone, he's going to be angry, we'll tell him, kill her, tomorrow he's going to sober up, and he's going to kill her. So they started making excuses, since the Churban Beis Amigdash, we no longer have Ruach HaKadosh, we can't answer the question. And nobody wanted, everybody was terrified of Achashverosh. So Haman goes, and he says, no, you have to depose Vashti, you have to kill her. So what happened? So after Achashverosh kills her, the Pesach tells us he actually did have terrible remorse and regret. Now, 
So what happened to all these advisors? What happened to Homer? How come he didn't punish them for giving him such terrible advice? They, 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 they talked him into doing something that he had such terrible regret for. How did they get away? Everybody was afraid to do it. What happened to them? There's actually a medrash. The medrash says that he was furious. He was filled with anger. And he sentenced them all to death. All the seven advisors were sentenced to death because they gave him this terrible advice to kill Vashti. Which begs the question, if Memuchan is homo and he was sentenced to death, so how is he still around the rest of the Megillah? And the Maral asked the question, say for al and the Peter from Megillah Esther, and he says, Machmas Hadoichik, we have no choice, we have to say that although he sentenced Haman to death too, but the death sentence wasn't carried out right away, it took time, and at the end when Haman was hung after the story of Esther, this too was included, part of it was also to punish him for giving the bad advice about killing Vashti, which is really difficult to understand. That means all of this time, the whole story of the Megillah, Haman was under a death sentence, and Achashverosh was furious with him, which makes it extremely difficult to understand. Okay, he lifted him up. Now, if you read the Megillah, you have to wonder. There's no introduction. There's no explanation. He took somebody. He made somebody so big. Everybody has to bow down to him. Why? Shouldn't we be told the reason? Like, it's a mystery. I don't know. Just, just, just follow the story. He lifts him up. And he doesn't just lift him up. Because the Medrash is Medayik, Ma'al Kal Asorim Asher Itoi, he even lifted him up higher than the king. And the Medrash says that Haman had a bima, he had a podium that was higher than the bima of Achashverosh. And by Yizak Zaoka Gedoy Lumar, when Mordechai cried out, he called that Gova Haman Me Achashverosh. Haman was lifted up higher than Achashverosh. Now, first of all, we don't even know why. Second of all, whoever heard of such a thing? Which Melech takes somebody for no apparent reason and he is Mechabadim and he gives him honor and he lifts him up even higher than the king himself. And let's not forget, according to the message we just mentioned, you're talking about a man who's on death row. A man who was sentenced to death, he's waiting to be hung for the bad advice about Vashti and he's lifted up, he becomes the highest person in the kingdom. It sounds bizarre. How do we understand such a thing? Now we also know Chazal tell us so Chazal tell us, we learn something from here. Mikan that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is magdim refua lemako. Whenever he brings a maka, a plague, he prepares the remedy beforehand. Because the whole story of Vashti getting killed, the Bixen Veseresh, the poisoning, the attempted assassination attempt on the king, all this was a preparation to defeat Haman, all before Haman is lifted up. So the Gemara says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu prepared the Rufur before the Mako. Masha Enkin says the Gemara by Uma Sa'olim, by the nations of the world, it's the other way around. He sends a Mako and then he brings a Rufur, and the Gemara brings Psukim for both. And it's difficult to understand. What's the difference? Mepharshim asked the Masha, who cares? The main thing is that there is a Rufur to the Mako. What significance is it? And Dafka, we learn it from here. What significance is it that the Rabbi Yisrael doesn't give a makkah to Yisrael without first preparing a remedy, without first preparing a cure? What difference does it make? We know that Haman was furious with Mordechai for refusing to bow. The Gemara uses an interesting lotion. My time, Haman the Ikani b'Mordechai. He was Makana, the lotion of jealousy. Kinnah, if he refuses to bow down, he was insulted, he was furious, he was angry. What idea is this Kinnah? Another thing we need to understand. He has everybody's bowing down to him, wherever he goes. And there's one person who refused to bow down. Okay, so you get rid of him, you kill him. You kill out an entire nation, a notion, a notion, a tough, innocent people. I mean, talk about overreacting. I mean, what, what happened already? So the guy insulted him. So you take him and, and you do what you do him in. What, 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 what kind of business is this? What basis is this? It doesn't even make any sense. Why would he want to destroy an entire nation because of what one person did? Which really raises another question which all the Mepharshim ask. Why did Mordechai choose to enrage Haman like this? 
true, Haman had an Avay de Zara, and you can't bow down to him. You don't have to be there. You could just make sure to keep out of Haman's way. And it's clear from Chazal and the Midrashim that he did everything in his power to, do, to let him know he said he would turn this way, he would stand in front of him. He would say, what? Don't think, I'm not bowing down to you because I am a Jew. Why you and, and it says people were upset with him. The Gemara says the, the people were complaining. Look what he's doing to us. He's getting us all into trouble. That's not the way you act in Golas. You keep he, he is a Russia. He's a dangerous. Keep out of his way. It would have been very easiest thing to be to avoid him. All the before Hashem asked this Kasha. What's going on? Why did Mordechai do such a thing? Let's go a little bit further into Megillah. So now there's a decree issued. And Mordechai sends a message with Hasoch to Esther, Hamalko. She's not aware of what's happening. And he says, tell her what's going on and tell her about the money that he offered to pay. It's very difficult to understand. In the Megillah, the whole Indian of, of Haman giving the Aser Allah from Kika figures very prominently. We don't know why. What difference does it make how much money he offered him? You're telling Esther, you want to send her an urgent message that the Jews are in terrible danger, they're about to be annihilated, the decree is already signed and sealed. You have to say, make sure, tell her about Parosha Sakesev, about the money that changed hands. Even in the great climax, when Esther points him out, first she says, What relevance is that? Who cares? I'm in terrible danger. He wants to destroy my nation. You have to mention that we were sold. And on top of that, there was never a sale. Because Achashverish gave back the money. He never took the money. So why is it so significant? Why is it figure so, it seems like a very, very important part of the story. What's going on over here? Tell her as Parash HaKesev. I think it's very difficult to understand. So she gets the message. She sends back a message to Mordechai. What's going on here? What is she telling you? Everybody knows you can't go into the Melech without being called. So if everybody knows, why is she telling Mordechai? Mordechai knows too. The whole world knows. And if Mordechai told to go, he obviously was aware of this Lord. He's telling you, Afal Pikein Dingos. What's she telling him? Before she asked this Kasha. Another cash, she says, I haven't been called for 30 days. What is that relevant? I wasn't, and if you were called last week, you can't go in without being called. So what is the point to say you weren't called for the last 30 days? Furthermore, the Mepharshim asks, Esther Amalka, the great Sadekis, she doesn't want to have a serious nefesh for Claudius. So what are you saying? I'm, I'm scared. I'm mean, serious nefesh. <laughs> Who wouldn't give their lives to save the Jewish people? Many thousands have done it many, many times over. What's the big deal for Esther Amalka? What's the Mepharshim say? Many Mepharshim say that she was telling Mordechai that it's not an opportune time. We all know that you can't go and you're going to get killed. You know too. I haven't been called for 30 days. That means he's soon going to call me. I know he's going to call me. And then I can go in Barat saying, why? The man, he's a dangerous person. We know he does reckless things. I'll go in when I'm called, when he wants me. Why should I take the chance of getting him angry? Why should I take the chance of getting killed? Isn't this a much more sensible way? And you, try to, you try to overturn a decree like this. You have to think it through. Let's do what makes sense. Let's get him in the moment when he's in a good mood, not when he's angry, not when he's furious. And therefore, she was telling Mordechai, let's just wait till he calls me and not put anybody in danger. But if that's the answer, so it begs the question. So why? She's saying Dvarim Shaltan. So why is Mordechai so upset with him? What are you angry about? She said the perfectly sensible thing. She said it's not a time to go. Why didn't Mordechai accept that answer? But remember, there's a much bigger pella. You read the Megillah, you don't, you don't realize, but it's Mama Shapella. I can't understand it. Where did Mordechai say to her to go in without being called? What do you mean? He never said anything in the sword. He said, go to the Melech. What do you mean? The only way to go into the Melech is to go in there and put yourself, your life at risk. You want, you want an appointment with the Melech, there's a minister of protocol. You send him, she, she, she's the man's wife, she's the queen. 
Send him a text, an email. There's something I want to discuss with you. And he'll come running with flowers. What did I do wrong? Right? You want to what? What's the big deal? You make an appointment. Nobody was saying, what, what about other kings? What about ministers? What about people who had to discuss uh, matters of state? Everybody went and took his life into his hands. You went and you said, I'd like to meet with the king. He said either yes or no. So why didn't she just make an appointment? Why didn't Mordechai say to go crash? And what for? Swamish Advar Peli, read the Megillah. Well, what's going on? What was the big danger? What was happening over here? Now she comes in to the king. And the king says, Ma'aloch Esther HaMalka. What is it that you want? Ma'ashe Losech, Ma'abakashosech. Ad chatsi ha'malkus, ha'malkus v'seos. And the Gemara says, I'll give you anything you ask. Chutz v'dover ha'choytzitz lo'malchus. Which means the Beis HaMikdosh, says the Gemara. If you want to ask me, but that I can't give you. Which is a pella. Why discuss the Beis HaMikdosh? She didn't even know that she's Jewish. She's coming to ask him, why on earth should it enter his mind? She's going to ask about the Beis HaMikdosh. And if he meant to tell her, why did he use such strange language? Such a... Just say, you can't ask the Beis HaMikdosh. Why did he call it Dover HaChoytetz Lomalchus? Furthermore, it was difficult to understand, he said it in a way, ask me anything you want except for this thing. Just listen to what she has to ask. And if she's asked for the Beis HaMikdosh, just say no. It sounds like whatever you're going to ask, I have to say yes. So please don't ask about the Beis HaMikdosh. What's going on over here? How do we understand such a thing? In the Sefer Yosef Lekach, the Sefer Yosef Lekach is a Pirish in the Kadma, the Pirish Hagro on Megillus Esther is really, like they say, is a shortened version of the Yosef Lekach. Yosef Lekach brings an unbelievable thing, and again to the Yontav of Purim, says when they were misakin, the Inyan of Simcha and Purim, the Inyan of, of Shikris Adolo Yoda, the idea was in the Yontav of Purim, a person should forget about Churban Beis Amikdosh. There's never a time a Jew forgets about Churban Beis Amikdosh. Im loyalis Yushalayim al Roysim Chasi, if they have a person's chasin, he breaks a glass under the chup, he puts ashes on his head, because you don't forget Churban Beis Amikdosh. And yet on Purim he brings... The Indian is to reach such a level of joy that you forget about the Churban Beis HaMikdosh. And we know that the, <laughs> the whole decree came about because they were Nehenna from Sudas HaChashverosh and they used the Kalim of the Beis HaMikdosh and they weren't properly misabal on the Churban Beis HaMikdosh. How, how could there be such a thing? How could there be such a... What, what, what kind of idea is this? How could there be a day when you don't think about the Churban Beis HaMikdosh? There's a Medrash. Shabbos Hulein Parshas Vayikro. The Medrash says, Vayikro El Moshe. Esther Amalka said, I don't feel that I have the power of Moshe. Vayikra el Moshe, Moshe was called. Vani loy nekresi, I wasn't called. The <coughs> Sumsaita brings this, Medjish has a Medjish plea. What connection does Esther have to Moshe? What's going on over here? Now, to understand this, I want to share with you a thought, a Hagdoma. It's written the same for Pritzadik of Tzadik HaKoyim. And he gives us an insight into Haman and what the power of Tum of Haman is. Amalek and Haman, their power is chutzpah, is insolence. The Nitzuach klape shmayo. The Gemara says, chutzpah afilu klape shmayo mahanya. There's such a thing when someone is a mechutziv that it can help even klape shmayo. And the root of this comes from Bilam and Bolog, who are the Shoresh of Amalek. The last two letters of Bilom and the last letter of Bolak spell out Amolik. It's Gemara and Sanhedrin. Chutzpe afilu klape shmaya mehanya. And this was the power of Amolik and Hom. Says Reb Tzaldik, whenever we have an enemy who tries to defeat us, when we defeat him, we draw out of him that particular midah and we get that thing the Kedusha. The thing that he had in Tuma now becomes ours in Kedusha. And now we get this power of chutzpah afilu klape shmayo mahanya. And he quotes two Gemara, there's a Gemara in Mesechte Psochim, where the Gemara says, Lam natseach mizmer le David, zamru le mi shesomach kishem menatschim oisoy. Sing to the one who is joyful when we defeat him. When we are menatseach, so to say. When we menatzeach over HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he has joy. And he quotes the famous Gemara in Mesech Baba Metziah, 
You know the story of Rabbi Eliezer and the question about the Tanur shall achnoi do a certain type of oven and Rabbi Eliezer asked him that it's Torah and all the Chachma Yisrael said that it's Tomei and he said let the river prove him right, let the walls of the base Medrash and they all started caving in. He said let Min HaShemayim they should say the Allah is like me and the Basel came out and said the Allah is like Rabbi Eliezer and you have to listen that the Tanur shall is Torah and you have to pass in Torah and Rabbi Shur get up and said we don't care what they say in Shemayim. The Torah was given to us, and we pass Achiram Lahatois, and we listen to how we pass in on this world, not that they pass in, in Shemaim. The Gemara says, Reb Nosson met Elio Anovi, and he said, What's Hashem doing now? He said, He's Mechayech, He's smiling, He's laughing. And Toysus asks, We know that Akadosh Baruch Hu does no schoik of since the Churban Beis Amit. He says, That's Ba'if and Kavua. But temporarily, a Milsta Bedichas, occasionally, the Rabbi Yishlam can be bali day schoik. And this schoik happens when we are menatzeach. And the Gemara says, the Baskel said, Nitzchunai, Nitzchuni, Bonai, Nitzchunai. You said, Torah Leib HaShemayim, we have to listen to you and not to me. Unbelievable Gemara. One of the Yisoydis in Yiddish guy. Torah Leib HaShemayim. The Tzadik says, this koyach we got from Homa. This ability to be menatzeach, and this is the Simcha of Purim. It's a day of schoik, himlich ois kuf b'schoik, the Sefi Yitzira says. It's a day of great joy, of, of, of a joy of la'as and lo've, of az yomole schoik pinu. And this chutzpah, this ability to be neschat saved, klape shmaya, and evoke a joy in shamayim, this was Homon's koyach, his power in Tumah, and we take it now and we use it in Kedushim. Let's try to understand what he's saying. What do you mean that chutzpah can bring a person to be menatzeach the Rabbi Nishalaylam and cause a chiyuch, cause a Baruch Hu, to laugh? You know, there's different types of chutzpah. Sometimes chutzpah gets us very angry. But sometimes chutzpah has a chen. Sometimes chutzpah gets us to smile. There's an azus and there's a chutzpah that's an assumption of closeness. I'm so close to you, our relationship is so solid that I can say things that no one else would say. I could do things that no one else would do. And because he's being mechutzev, what he's doing is saying that our relationship is such that it's beyond all of the formalities. And that brings a happiness and a hiskashrus. Now the Gemara says, as I'll say, Kelev is Azen Shebechayas. The most insolent of all of the animals is the dog. Ravutna once said, he said, people think, why is the Kelev the Azen Shebechayas? He says, the Welt meint weil er built. The world thinks because he barks. He says, weil er halt sich farah yedid. He considers himself a friend. That's his chutzpah. And he gets places because of who's man's best friend? The Kelev. He gives nothing. He doesn't give wool, he doesn't give eggs, he doesn't give, doesn't give milk, he doesn't give anything. But he's the Azan Shebechayas. The Medrash says in the passing Esther, Amalkin, Kapitel Chavbe, is the people that she was mispalel, Amatzela Chalayela, Sashacha, Keli Kelam, Zavton, she was mispalel, Hatzilo, Mecherev, Nafshi, Miyat Kelev, Yechidosi. The Medrash says, Kelev Zuhomon. Hatzilo Micherev Nafshi, the Rishatev is Homo. If you add Miyat Kelev and you put it together, I think it's the Rekeach says, you have Homon and Memuchon. Homon is the Kelev, the Azin Shebechayas. Amolek, what does Amolek say? <laughs> I remember when I was a young child, I had an uncle and aunt who lived in Eretz Yisrael, and they came for Pesach. I remember I was overhearing my aunt talking to my mother last show. And she was talking about her little four-year-old, a very labored like a child. And she was saying, you know, about his antics. And that every night he wakes up and goes to his mother, wakes up in the middle of the night and comes to him. And she keeps, you know, you, know, you can't keep, you can't keep waking up in the middle of the night. She'll tell you, you know, you're a big boy already, you have to stay in bed. And he just kept coming. And one, I said, okay, listen, Srilik, you're a big boy, you're already four years old. You can't just keep waking up in the middle of the night and coming, waking your mother up. And tonight, I'm telling you, you're going to get a big punishment if you come. And he came anyway. And she started yelling about, I told you you shouldn't come. He looks at, Avalani amotek shelach. I'm your sweetie. And she burst out laughing. What am I to do with such a kid? <laughs> what are you going to do with him? Give him a patch? 
Amolek. The Medr says, Amolek says to the Rebbein Shtabram, like all the other nations, I want to destroy the Jews. He says, Amolek says, Reishis Goyim Amolek. Rebbein What do you need them for when you have me? Be machlef. I can serve you. Amole can serve you better than they can. I can give you shkola more than they can give you. I am closer to you than them. I once read there was a woman who never had the terrible job that she had to assist Mengele when he was doing his experiments and she wrote in her diary that he used to talk to her and he said there are only two gifted nations in the world, the Jews and the Germans. The question is who is going to dominate the world? Amole, Amole says, we're the Jews, we are much closer to you, Rabbi Nishalayim. Amolek has an assumption of closeness, saying to the Bosh, Ani Amotek Shalach, I'm your beloved, not Klal Yisrael. That's an unbelievable chutzpah. Malchusa the Aro is Ke'en Malchusa the Rekia. Whatever happens in Shemaim happens here. The Gemara tells whenever the word Melech is mentioned in Megillah, it also refers to the Rabbi Nishalayim. Haman's relationship to Achashverish was chutzpah mahanya. It was insolence. It was an assumption that we have a connection. I can say things to you that no one else can and become bigger and bigger because of it. Everybody else is afraid to say to you what to do about Vashti, but I am so close to what did the Medrash say, what the Gemara say. Horag ishtoi bishvil oihavoi. He killed Vashti because of his dear friend Homer. Homer was the smallest. Had yet koifetz beroish. The essence of Homer is that he's a nobody, but he insists and he pushes himself forward. He says, I am on top. Ad kidei kach. Ad kidei kach it goes. Gidl amelach achas achimes Homer. Why? No reason. Tafke, there is no reason. Because he claims it, he assumes it, the chutzpah gives him that level, even if he's somebody who there's a death sentence on him. He's able to say, it doesn't make a difference. I am the closest, and by saying that he is the closest, he gets higher and higher, even higher, that he can tell the Melech what to do. On Purim, when we take this level, and this becomes ours, Bikdusha, and a person has a connection to the Rabbi Nishalaylam, even if he's a head yet, and even if his maizim don't add up, even if there's a person, there can be a gazera on him. Even the person who's so distant from the Melech. I want to share with you a lotion that Rapsodic writes in the Sefer Divrei Soifrim. He says, All Yomim Toivim are about our Milas. And that's why when Mashiach will come, the oil of Mashiach will be greater than any, any other Yontiv. Hako mitzad ha Shehem. And every other yontiv, the bigger tzaddik you are, the greater your power is. On Purim, kifi goidel hachesorin, goidel hamalo. No, what a hapachu means? Everything gets switched around the other way. If you're 10 feet in the pole, you turn it this way, you get that much closer. Because I have a chesorin, because I'm not worthy. And Afal PK and I say to the Rebbeinu life, Ani Amotek Shalach, I know that you love me. I know I'm one with you. There's no limit to your power. And just like <coughs> Haman had Kaviochel, he had a kise, he had a bima that was higher than the Melech. Listen to the words of the Shem Yishmuel. Zeresh told Haman, go to Achashverosh, lay more, more uh, says, uh, go tell him. Uvavoike, emoir la melech, the yislu es mort chayolov. So you ever heard of such a thing? You tell a melech what to do? You ask a melech. 
don't tell a melech what to do. And he brings this medrash that the bima of Haman was higher than the bima of Achashverosh. And as Mord Chatzadi cried out, Gova Homa Achashverosh, and he went, Lamor la melech lislois es Mordechai. Says the Heilig Hashem Yishmuel, Umikam. Kol ish maskil should think when it comes Purim, when all of the koiches of Haman and Tumah become ours, Bikdusha. Purim is not just a day of Tfilo. Purim, our power is so extraordinary, we can be Emoel on Melech. We tell the Melech. We have a power. Kaviochel. The Chutzpah, yes. Who are we? Head yet Koifetz Beroish. How can we have such a closeness? But if we believe we have such a closeness and we can tell him, just like Homer said, listless as what we said, listless as Homer, to take the Ra out of us, to bring us closer to him, if we have this assumption that it's truly so. On Purim, we have to say there was a Gzeira, Ksava Shanechta, Venechta, Betambasa, Melech, Eilash, and we say, Toyer Loi Bashamayimi. Klai Yisrael has to live. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu laughs. It's a day of simcha. It's a day of schoik. But what happened? What's, it? <coughs> What's the difference? Where was Haman's mistake? Haman was led to believe that his chutzpah is working. You know, when is chutzpah ma'oyer rechein? When is chutzpah when there really is a Kesha, when there really is a connection. In Klal Yisrael it says, Kulach Yofar Ayosi Mum Ein Boch. Even when we have a virus, the Medr says in Shirashirim, it's not really in us. The Medr gives a motion to an ego, a knot, and a hard shell that falls into, into, the, into the dirt, into the mud, into a sewer. You take it out, you wash it off, you open it up, you can give it to a king to eat. Because even though there's filth on it, but it's not boch, it's not part of you. On Haman, it says the first mention of Haman is memuchan. If you look at the word, it's written, not mem, mem, vov, chof, nun, but mem, vov, mem. You read it memuchan, but it's written mumchan. And the Svarim darshan mum kan. Be'etzem, there's a mum. The child who's truly mum ein boch, even when he's mechutzevdik, that could be mo'er rechein. Haman assumed he had an assumption of closeness that he can have this azus, but it's not true because he really was a Balmum. And this is the significance of that we learn from here that HaKadosh Baruch was Magdim Refu Lamaka. We ask, what's the difference whether the Refu comes before the Maka? What's the difference? The difference is when the Refu is there before, the Maka is not a real Maka. By the Uma Soilam, they have a Maka, they have a Mum needs to be healed by us any moment that means even especially a rochni is a person has a difficulty he has a midara a taivara things that need to be fixed he has to know mum ein bach why not because the refu is here before and anything that has the remedy before it came you know it's not a real mum it's not real they tell the story that Abdullah the Lelava was once in a different town he was visiting he was one with his chasidim and a little boy walked by and he said to him good morning Ziza Yingle. good morning sweet child and he looked at him and said, good morning to you, Rebbe. A few hours later, Rebbe is walking, and he sees there's a, a, a whole family chasing after him. They're calling after Rebbe, Rebbe, father, mother, children. He says, well, what happened? Stop, stop, stop. Rebbe, you made a moifus, you made a miracle. He said, what are you talking about? What miracle? He said, we had a child who hasn't said a word since he's born. He's deaf and dumb. He's, he's, he's a cherish, an elam. And today he came up with just talking and talking. And I said, what happened? He says, well, the Rebbe said to me, good morning, Zisa And I said to him, good morning, Zisa Rebbe. And since then, he hasn't stopped talking. It's an unbelievable, though, an open miracle. The Rebbe said, no, no, it's not a miracle. It's not a moifus. I'll tell you what happened. The Rebbe Yishlam knows that I can't bear to think bad of any Jew. Now imagine, I would have said to this boy, good morning. And I wouldn't have understand it. I wouldn't have realized at first that he can't hear. He wouldn't have answered me. I would have thought he's being a mechutzah. I would have thought I would have been upset with him. Then by then I would have figured out that, he's, that, he, that he can't hear, but there would have been a few moments when I would have looked down at him. And a Kaddish Baruch who knows how badly I don't want to look down at any heat, so he wouldn't allow you for a second that he shouldn't answer. It wasn't a miracle, it's not a mitzvah at all. 
The Rabbi Yishlam didn't want me to think that. The Rabbi Yishlam put a refuah into this world for any maka Yid has, because he doesn't want to see us even for one moment in a matziv that we really have a mum. Haman is mum can. He's a mum. And therefore, his rela- he, he, he makes the mistake. He assumes that he has this as this relationship that it goes on and on and on, but it was all he was being tricked. The Svasema says, Gidl HaMelech HaChashverish, he made him so, so big, because we know ultimately all base Haman goes to us. So the bigger you make him, the more we're going to get. And then comes, so because then on the day of Purim is a day, you know, where we do things we normally don't do. You know, that's... You all know sometimes the kids get unruly and the cheder, the rabbi gets upset and he says to the boys, excuse me, it's not Purim today. It's not Purim today. No, but sometimes it is Purim. So you say, hey, rabbi, today's Purim. All the things that we can't do and we can't be because it's not Purim today, there's one day a year where we could be that. And that's an expression and an assumption of closeness, of azus, of azo, kamoves ahavo, and Purim, we break a lot of rules. We break rules like the child who breaks the rules because he knows that there's no one closer to him and that his closeness is, is, is non negotiable. That's who he is. Now, where did this Azus of Haman come from? Where did he get it from? We know that Haman, the Medra says, was the wealthiest man in the world. There were two wealthiest people. There was one was Jewish, was Kairach, and one was a guy who was Haman. He was the richest man who ever lived. No, the passing tells us, Oshir Yane Azus. Azus comes from Ashiris. The Medra says that Achashverosh lifted him up higher than him because he was the spoil from his money. He knew he was richer than him. And that Azus is what lifted him up. Now we know Chazal tell us, that a true Ashir is only Ezu Ashir, someone who's Samech Bechelka. Someone who's happy with what he has. We know that Haman was the ultimate Cholzein and Ushoyvili, whatever he has, he was un- unhappy. So his Ashirs was lacking. Who was the richest person in the world? So Mordechai refused to bow. And we asked the question why was he, why was he starting, why was he enraging Haman? What's the purpose of all this? There's a Nifladik Achsam Saifa. Listen to what Achsam Saifa says. It's unbelievable. Saifa said things. We don't know where they came from. We must have heard it from Allah. Mamish. He says the reason that Mordechai antagonized Haman because Mordechai in the Tkufa of Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar demanded everybody bow down to the idol, and Hanani, Mishol, Ba'azai, and Daniel, they refused and they were thrown into the Kivshon Eish, and he was thrown into the Goyev Aroyos. There were many other tzaddikim who did, as the halacha says, and they hid. Chagai, Zechariah, Malachi, and Mordechai. They said, watch, we don't, we don't have to be there. We'll just keep out, we'll be mischamik. And Mordechai had regret that he wasn't zoichet to be killed al Kiddush Hashem. And the reason he wanted, and even though Al-Pidin, he wasn't mechuyiv, Alpidin, he didn't have to stay next to Haman. He tells an unbelievable story that the it brings a mice with a smack. There was a group who was traveling to Rebuda Achos and they were attacked by bandits and they were massacred a certain shame and they were saved. And, and Rebuda Achos told him, you were meant to be killed al Kiddush Hashem. You should go back and not say the shame and you give your life al Kiddush Hashem. So it brings the mice. The smack brings it to Rebuda Achos. And he says, Mordechai wanted to be killed al Kiddush Hashem. Mordechai said, didn't dream that Homer will do something so crazy as to demand to kill out all of Klai So What does he want from them? I'm going to be I'm not going to bow. Let him kill me, and I will be zoichet to give my life al Kiddush Hashem. And yet Homer, instead of doing that, he said, I want to kill out all of Klai So What's going on over here? What's going on? The ability to die al Kiddush Hashem. What does that mean? So Baltanya writes, I feel kal shebekalim, the simplest Jew. When it comes to a test of Kiddush Hashem, most often he's ready to give his life. What does that mean? When a Jew is ready to give his life al Kiddush Hashem, he's saying, I need nothing. Because when you give away your life, you give me all your money, all of your enjoyment, all of your pleasures, all of your years, all of your ambitions, all of your dreams, you're saying, I don't need anything. The Baruch I need just you. Inherent in every single year, there's the Nukud Epinimius that's ready to die for Kaddish Baruch means that he really needs nothing at all. 
Haman was ikani, he was jealous of Mordechai. I have everything and I'm miserable. He has nothing, he doesn't need anything. He's so much richer than me. This Ashiris, I can't bear the kinna. And he understood that this is the Nekud Primis of every single person in Cloud, even Kal the Kalim. How can I allow such a nation to exist? means no one else ever, ever reached. That's where he wanted to go. Now, Yosef Lekach says that on Purim we forget about Churban Beis Hamikdash. How could it be such a thing? How can we ever forget about Chur? How can there be a moment in his life when you stop thinking about Chur and Beis Hamikdash? Now we know the highest madrega a person can reach. The Mishnah says we have to serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu Shleil Manas Lekabel Pras, not for reward. You can't even imagine the thing. You know, we serve a Kaddish Baruch It's a normal thing. The Mishnah says there's such a level Shleil Manas Lekabel Pras. They tell a story about the Vilna Gaon. One year there was no Hadassim, and his Talmidim went searching for Hadassim. They went. They found. Uh, a Goyesh woman had Hadassim planted in a flower pot on her windowsill. They went and they wanted to buy it. She said, you can't sell it because her daughter's getting mad. Those days the bride would wear a crown made out of myrtle branches. She said, she needs it for her daughter's wedding. They begged her, says, there's a big tzaddik, a holy man. The Goyesh, she said, okay, you know what? I'm ready to give it to you. I don't need any money, but the rabbi should promise that the reward in heaven for this mitzvah should go to me. They didn't know whether to agree or not, but they said, okay, we'll take it. I asked the going, they did right. They went the going and said, you did exactly like you should. And they say that that year the going was singing and dancing by Dalad Mina, and they never saw him in such simch. They said, why is there ever such simch? Never was I Mekayim and Mitzvah. I could say, really, Shalayam and Asla Kabul Pras? I would get no reward. I could, Amam is truly just for Shem Shemai. Such an experience brings me the greatest joy. Why are they come out the Regis? Why are they come out the Regis? <clears throat> no, there was a Yid, you know, there was a Stalin the Chasen named Remeir Pilchik. Very, very great seed, very special man. I knew him close to him because after my shvah was nifter, my, my shvigar remarried to him. So I got to know him very well. Extraordinary person. He gave his life for Klal Yisro, raising tzedakah and building most of the Somebody told me, a friend of mine had a brother who was very, very ill. He's no longer with us. A young man with six children. He had a terrible illness. So says, Ramea came to visit him in the hospital. And he said to him, look, you know, you're a young man. Your children are still young. You need to become his own. Coach Baruch to send you a full shalom. Listen to what I want to do. I spent my whole life raising money for tzedakah, helping people. You know, it's unbelievable. He said, I'm an old man. He says, but I want to give you the schar for all of my mitzvahs. Everything I ever did in my life, I want to give to you. You should have the schus, and this should bring you a full shalom. And he was serious. He wasn't joking. He was said it with his whole life. He was a real chassid. He would give everything away for another year. And the man looks at him. He says, you know, I'm a mayor. I, 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 you know, you're an old man. I, I can take away all of your rewards. He says, I want to give it to you. You should take it. He says to me, you know, I can't do it. I can't take it. But you know what I want? I want one thing. I just want the schar for this one mitzvah that you were ready to give away all of your ilam haba to help another Jew. Give me the schar for this mitzvah. That I want to have. So, okay, good deal. I give you this. They say he was supposed to live six weeks. He lived another few years. Here's the story. So the person says, I need absolutely nothing. I need nothing. There's an unbelievable chsam soifer. And I'm going to repeat it. Even though in other places it's mavur that he said in the matzah of great tsar, it's not, but it's printed in the Rosh chsam soifer. Soifer says an unbelievable thing. We know we all want Mashiach. He says, why do we want Mashiach? He says, for the Rabbeinah Shalom, the Rabbeinah Shalom, it's Yitochen, he says, he has more nachas ruach without Mashiach. The Rabbi Shalom has more pleasure from our Avoida in Golis, with all of the Nisyonis, with all of the mysterious Nefesh that we have, with all of the Golis of the Zionis Avura, and we go into Shul and we daven and we do Tshuva. He has more Nachasruach from that than he could ever have by rebuilding the Beis Amikdash. But we need the Beis Amikdash. The Gaul is for us, for the Rabbi Shalom, he's better off keeping us. He says he was crying, he was. He was uh, it was a terrible tzara going on. He said, Ma, the Gemara says, Ma, the Baskel says, Ma, le lo'ov, shehigla es bono. He says, Ma, hef, so the Rebbeinu Shleilam, you don't lose anything by keeping us in Golis. You just get such beautiful, mysterious nefesh from us. But for us, we can't bear the Golis anymore. And I tell a story about the Belzeruli, that he once was in Vienna, he went to go to see a doctor, and he saw two 
Jewish soldier, I think from the Austrian army, and they had some time off during the day. They went into a shul that was sitting and learning. And he peeked in, he saw them sitting, and he says, you know, these two bachram, you know what they're doing? They're holding back Mashiach. It's because the Rebbe Hashem is going to bring Mashiach, where is he going to have this? Where is he going to have two soldiers when in a few moments of time they're going to sit and learn? Mashiach and everything is going to be opal. How the base? He's not going to, he's not going to have this avoidant. For the Rebbe Hashem says, there's some soy for pill of a half he, he He has more nachat. There's nothing when Mashiach comes that we can give him. That we're not giving him now more. You know what we say on Purim? On Purim we say to the Rebbein Shleim, Adolo Yoda. We forget about Chumash. We say to the Rebbein Shleim, listen, we want the Beis HaMikdash. Whatever is best for you. If it's better for you to keep us here, we even accept that. If it's Or, if it's Baruch, Rebbein Shleim, whatever is best for you, we accept upon ourselves because we need absolutely nothing. And this was the Madrega of Esther Amalka. Esther Amalka was the only one who didn't go back when the Eden were redeemed. She stayed there in the palace of Achashverosh for the rest of her life. And if we reach even one moment on Purim of such a feeling, I need absolutely nothing. I don't even need. I don't even need Gula. Whatever you want, whatever you want. At that moment, we've touched the deepest level of existence of Simcha humanly possible. We reach the highest level possible. And that's perhaps the Pshat. Why one day a year on Purim, we forget about the Chorim Beis If that's what you want, that's okay. But let's go a little bit deeper, because we all want the Beis Hamikdash. We want to tell the Beis Look, Rebbeinu Shlaim, you build, build us the Beis Hamikdash, and we'll show you that we'll serve you then, like we served you here. That's what we want to tell the Rebbeinu Shlaim. Let's go a little bit deeper and try to understand this. I want to share with you another word from the Chassam Seif and Pashas Vayigash. And he says that it says that when Yosef met Ben Yomin, so Vayev Yosef al he cried on his neck. Ben Yomin Boch al he cried on Yosef's neck. And Chazal tells us that Rashi brings that we each crying for the Churban Beis Hamikdash. Yosef was crying on the neck of Ben Yomin about the Churban Beis Hamikdash. That's in the Chelka Shel Ben Yomin. Ben Yomin was crying on the neck of Yosef the Churban of the Mishkan. The Chassam Seif has a dove nifla. The Nezer brings the same word that we find. The pasuk Kemigdal David Savorech Boni Letalpios. The Zohar Kodesh says that Savorech is the base Hamigdosh. Why is the base Hamigdosh called a Tzavor? Why is it called the neck? He says because the neck is what connects the head to the body. There's a Shemayim. There's Rochni. There's the Seichel. There's the Shoras Hashchina. And it has to come into this world, which is an earthly place, which is a Gashmi is a place. There needs to be a connector. The Beis Hamikdash is that connecting point that brings together the Ruchni and the Gashmi. The Beis Hamikdash is a Tzavor. And that's why when they cried on the Tzavor, they cried on the Churban Beis Hamikdash. Says the Chsam The Beis Hamikdash is not the ultimate goal. Even when Hashem had a Beis Hamikdash, he wanted something more. He wanted a relationship, not a tzavar. There should be, because a tzavar means there's a separation between us and him. There's a, a conduit that we have to go through to connect. Ultimately, lost Lover, the connection will be one where there's no separation at all. And remember, it's brought, Shlokot and others bring, that the only reason we needed a Beis Hamidr is because of the Chet Ego. We became distant, so we needed to have a Beis Hamidr to touch him. And the Chet Ego brings it over Nifla, he says, there's Dalit Goliath, the Keneged, the Keneged, the Dalit Chayas that I mentioned, the Dalit Behemus Tameyas, Ashofan, Agamal, and Nebes, Vesa Chazir, Esav, Edoim, is a Chazir. A Chazir has no neck. Because his connection to the Sitra Achra is not, becomes without, it, it, it becomes part and parcel. That is, it depends, as when Klai Yisrael is not on the highest levels of Kedusha, when we are, then it has a separation. Bahoya Kashetorah, the Farakto, Ulo mitzav, uh, you know, there used to be a time when, in, when in, in the Goyesh world, there was a distance between the person and the Tumah, between him and the Samach Mem. There was a neck in between. It was considered, when somebody became low, it was considered, that, you know, you couldn't just do it. There was, there was a, a person had some sort of dignity. Today, 
When we live in the world of Ix, the Mashiach, we see Mamasha Chazir. There's no separation between him and the Ra. He's proud about the Ra. He it's, 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 can do the worst things. It's nothing to be ashamed of anymore. The Chesim Seifer says, Mazel Adar Dogim. Dogim also have this. Dogim have no neck. Lost <coughs> Lover, we're going to be in the Madrege, that there won't be a Tzavah, when Asati Mishkani B'Soyichichem. The says, that brings a Posig, that lo yoyinu oit orem bris Hashem, Rashi says, every year will have the Kedusha of the Orem. You be'et some won't even need a Beis HaMikdosh. Because the Kedusha will be everywhere. And in every blade of grass and every glass of water, there won't be any kehanim anymore. There won't be any, everybody's going to be a novi. There won't be any separations. The whole val yoga b'chol eisal ha'kodesh won't be. That's the ultimate connection of loss of love. What is that connection? A tzavor means derech eretz. Means you can't just go. It means Beis Migdash represents protocol, formality. I just can't connect to the Rabbi Shav. There has to be a pathway. There is a separation between us. When there's no tzava, in the world of chutzpah, klape, shmayo, mahanya, we don't need a connection. Mitzvahs, betelos, what is a mitzvah? Mitzvah, milosh, and tzav, so it's a connection. We need the mitzvahs to connect us. Mitzvahs, betelos, la'osid, lovoy. La'osid, lovoy, the connection will be without any separation, like the dogim who don't have any tzava, we need to understand what does it mean that we need to have a base of from Mashiach will come, which we'll speak about in a moment. That's the ultimate, ultimate chibur to the Rabbi Nishalaylam when there's no need for any formalities, for any protocol. Beis Hamidrash represents that separation. He says, that's not the highest level. Now, when Esther had to go into Achashverosh, so he asked all the questions What's going on? Why tell a Prussian Sakes? Why is it? Mordechai was saying to her, you think, what are you saying? You, can't, you don't have the koyach of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, why did he have to be called? So the Medrash says, lim the Torah derech Eretz. Moshe was adoin an avim, and yet, he said, until I'm called, I'm not going in. I have to be a bal derech Eretz. I can't be a muchutzu. She says, Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't go. How can I go? Vanilo in crazy love. It's a chutz. He said, you don't understand. I told you, as perosh as hakesef, the whole power of Haman is his azus, his asher yana azus. The only way you're going to feed him, to defeat him now, is you dafka have to go in, not being called. You dafka have to not wait. Vanilo in crazy. If you don't go now, you're going to show there's a distance between you and the melech. If you're waiting for an appointment, you're waiting to be called, you're saying, we're not so close. You're saying there's still a tzavar between us. And then, Hayois, the Melech represents Melech Malchi Amlochim. Then what you're saying is that his claim to closeness is stronger than ours. The only way you can achieve what you have to achieve now is dafki to go in, not bingo. That's what I'm telling you. I know that you work. I know that you can make an appointment. I know all that. But then there's a distance. And that's not what's needed now. Now we have to overcome the power of our Molek. And we have to show that we have a connection that no one else has. Now listen to the Lashon of the Medrash. What happened? What happened when, I, when, when she came in? So the Gemara says that when Esther came in, she was so terrified, she couldn't hold her head up. Bo Malach v'higbiyat Savoro. A Malach came and lifted up her neck. This is the Lashon of the Medrash. Latisa Esther, I say no, she came in. And she saw the Pnei HaMelech, and his eyes were on fire. He was so angry. She was so frightened, she leaned her head on the Nara, on the maidservant who was next to her, who was standing on her right side. And Hashem saw, and he had Rachmanes. And he turned to the pain of this Yisoyma, who trusted in him. He filled her with chain. And behold, the Melech jumped out of off his throne. He kissed her. He threw his arm on her neck. What's happening here? What's happening here? She came in now. She was even the Anila Nikrasi Love Allah Melech. She's saying there is no distance between us. 
Even though I'm now in a massive kasher of I've lost everything, and I'm going to lose my life, and I'm going to lose my Elam house, my Elam Haba, I'm going to stay in Golis forever. And Amalachim said, such a moment, lift up her neck, now is the time, now is the time for her to ask for the Beis Hamikdash, the endless Beis Hamikdash, the Beis Hamikdash al but when the Melech saw her, and he saw she came in with Mesiris Nefesh, in a place of Achas, Dosay, Lohomus. Do you know what Achas, what the Melech saw then? He saw her risking her life, and he saw every bit of Mesiris Nefesh for the coming thousands of years. He saw all the killers, Kedoshes, who gave their lives, who were burnt and killed and murdered in order to, to learn Torah Hashem. He saw the Spanish Inquisition. He saw the, all of the, the Crusades. He saw how many people and how many times all of the underground yeshivas in Russia and all the Hanukkah they lit in the concentration. He saw everything. It was all there in Esther, but she's falling. And he said, Givald, anything you ask me, I'll give you. But if I give you everything, and I'll give you Beisam Migdash, I'm going to lose this relationship. Where am I going to have the thousands of years of mysterious never? So he covered her neck. And said, you can have anything. I have to give you everything. But that one thing, I can't, I can't, I can't give up. I can't give up. This avoid of goals. Which is a dvar pella. You know, the simcha of Purim is the perfect simcha. It's beyond, it's so perfect that it even goes and extends into loss of love. But the whole Megillah is about not having a base amigdash. The whole Megillah is Akati Abli It's it's an imperfect simcha. What we're saying is by the Rabbi Shalom, we're giving the Rabbi Shalom the fact that we are in Golis, the fact that we are distant, that Kasha Rabadati Avadati, Lufi Goidla Chasor and Goidla Malo, we are knowing and we say we are connected to you. Without the Tzavor, we are ready to give everything up for you, Rabbi Shalom. There's a level of closeness that will carry into the Osset Lovai. What do you think, what would have happened if Haman would have succeeded and Haman would have destroyed Klal Yisro? Gemara says that the Medjur says the Ebishter gave him a choice. Should Yiddish Kinder have Golos or Gehenim? And he chose Golos. Why he chose Golos for? Gehenim takes 12 months, it's over with. That's how Ramavina knew, yes, We'll have by the Matikan. But where's the Rabbi Shalom going to have that avoid of goals? If Haman would have killed us, what would have happened? You know what happened? Sheikh would have come the next day. Of course. It was only Xayr on our goof, Mamma. We would have entered Shemaim. We would have had a Zichuk. Mashiach would have come. But it wouldn't be Esther Abalk in the palace of Achashveh. It wouldn't be here in Tavshin I and Tess with all the disyoyness of today's world, people serving the Rabbi Shalom, and maybe sometimes feeling kasha Rabbi, they want to come and put him, they say, Ani amotek shaloch. That the Rabbi Shalom wouldn't have. The Yeshua of Purim was a Yeshua of Akati Avdi Achashver Shana. So if the Rabbi Shalom wants that relationship, so why lost love are we going to have a Beis HaMikdash for? Now that this is much higher than Beis Hamikdash, it's a higher level than Beis Hamikdash. Beis Hamikdash is, is with a tzavur, with a formality, with derecherets, with mitzvahs. So first I thought perhaps, you know, we're going to say to the Rebbeinu Shalom, yes, now is the world of Kula Hava. We know that you missed that old old avoda, so we'll have a place, a mokum of yira. The sham navot chabira kimeoyla muchshanim kadmoiniyos. To be able to show the Rabbi Shalom will still serve you with that level, we'll have a place, we'll give you that type of avoid avoid of year. Let me speak to them, Adover Omak Rabbi said. What does it mean? Mitzvah's betelos law said love. Call him by Adam, I see the Levot. Haki, don't we daven? The Shom Nalab and Erob and Shtachlof and Echba Sholish Pamir Ragaleinu, you'd bring Kabonis, Sholish Rafa. What about all the. What about all the my Adam, I see the. Okay, so this could be as bad as Shaluka, it's a big discussion what actually is going to be. Perhaps it's not a steer. There's not going to be a tzivui. Mitzvahs betelos la'asad lava. B'shom na'alav and erov and ishtachadah. 
the, it's going to be a world of Ahava, pure Ahava. What's all this year about? Be a world of cool air, there'll be no separation. We'll be mamish, there'll be no, there'll be no, no separation at all. Where's the year? And they tell the Meister of Osha Stolna. Osha Stolna was, was a Rebbe, and his connection to Chesidim was tremendous. Ahava. They loved him, he loved them back. Once he called in a Chassid and he said, Tell me, are you afraid of me? Look, they didn't know what to say. Afraid of the Rebbe? Love the Rebbe. Love the Rebbe. Are you afraid of me? Answer the question. Are you afraid of me? Tell me, do you have any fear of me? So he said, Rebbe, yes. I'm afraid that something can happen. I could do something that will take away the Ahava that we have. That's my fear. So he gave him a patch. He said, Shaykh, what do you think Yira is? That's what Emma's Yira, real Yira, is the fear that Ahava could become Nifsa. Here we have a different Yira. We have a Yira. We could be playing a Yira of Gehenna. We have all types of years. Loss of love. You know what a Moschal Komash is? It means. It means there'll be such a habit, there'll be one fear. One fear. There'll be a fear that maybe Chas Vashon, this Ahava could become Nifsak. And that's why we're going to have a Beit Samikdash. The Shom Navod Chabi. We're not going to be Mitzvah. We're not going to be Mechuyah. We're going to do it ourselves. The Shom Navod Chabi. We're going to create a mocking. The Shom Navod Chabi. Yira Kimei Oilam Mokshonim Kadmai Niyos. And that's where we are going to produce this Avoider of Yira. What's the real year? The Emma's year that shouldn't be Nifsak the Ahava. On the Yom Tov of Purim, we connect to the world of Lost and Love. The Yom Tov of Purim, there's no separations. The Yom Tov of Purim, the Goidel HaChesorin, Goidel Hamal. The Yom Tov of Purim, there's no separation. We don't even think about Churban Beis Hamikdash. We're in a world where the whole, the whole Simcha of Purim is a balance. Even though there's no base on there's that connection. Perhaps that's the Pshat, the Moses Kom Rabba was Shachtel Rab Zayr. In the middle of the Sudas Purim, he shechted him to show that in Purim, we, we, we don't need that connection. The connection is Mamlish, we are one. No matter where we are, no matter where we're holding. The more distant we are, the greater the Chutzpah Klape Shmaya Mahan. The greater the confidence that we have to have. And if a yid stands on the Yom Tov and says to the Boyne Shlob, Shloyevoy Shuvla Yikomul on Netzach Kol Hachoy Simbok, I am fully confident in our connection, in our Chibur. And any mum that I have is really mum ein boch. The whole year, it's not Purim. But on Purim, it's a different time. On Purim, Emoy Lamelech, we tell the Melech. On Purim, our assumption of true closeness, of that I am, I am your beloved child, and there's really there's no formalities between us. Purim today, there's no formalities, no protocol. It's a day where everything is goes completely different. We don't we break all of the rules. That's moir eschoyk. That's a chain. That's a chain. <coughs> That's the chain of the of, of the chutzpah klape shmaya mahamia. And that's why it's an opportunity that takes us to a different place. The Rabbi Yishlam is on itself, and we should be zoiche. It's the unbelievable oiris in the simcha of Purim, that special closeness, the closeness that's beyond, it, 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 it is, there's no place in this world to, to contain it. A closeness where we can say to the Melech anything, and we should say to the Melech, anything we need, and anything we want, and anything that's hurting us, anything that's aching us. And to know that we will be filled with chain in his eyes. That's our avoid. That's the avoid of goals. And this avoid will take with us when everything else will be bottled. We'll take it with us into the world of Asad Lavoy. And there's going to be such a connection. Asad Lavoy, there's going to be that chibur, the chibur of Purim. All the Yamtoy Masidim be bottled, except the Yontel of Purim. That's why we should be Zoichel, or Yehudim Hoysoyim, or Simcha Vesasan, and Vikar. We should be zechik on the shbaruch. We should fill us with the seichel ayosha, with the siyat of the shema, with the wisdom that we need, and the koiches hanefesh to serve our kodesh going to our holy and tzonis. We should zechik to be as Mashiach to kainu and binyan beis hamidish from holy b'yameinu. Amen.